What's going on, YouTube? My name is FG3000, back in the place to be. And finally, the MMO Hopper has come to Blade and Soul. It's been a long, long time. I've been watching this game for years, so it feels really good to finally be able to play a North American client blade and soul so let's just jump right into it if you're not familiar with mmo hopper this is where i hop from mmo to mmo and kind of give you my thoughts and impressions of the title um this is my level 32 blade master um the max level in this game is level 45 so i've played enough of the game to kind of give you my thoughts and impressions on the title so let's just jump right into it um this video will be pve and i'll make another separate video covering pvp um because this game has a ton and ton of depth to it, um, which is really good. It's really refreshing, finally, to have a game that's a little bit more than what uh, meets the surface. So let's just get into it. All right, it. so let's talk about combat in Blade and Soul. As you can see, I have a few different buttons here. Tab, one through four, left mouse button. There's also a right mouse button, and then Z through V. Now, Blade and Soul is really heavy on contextual combat. So what that means is, if the enemy's on the ground, you have certain abilities. If the enemy's up in the air, you have certain abilities. If you're on the ground, you have certain abilities. If you're in the air, you have certain abilities. Um, if you're behind the mob, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, these buttons will change based off of that. So this makes the game uh, allow you to have a ton of different abilities, as you can see here, without having to overload your screen with a bunch of hotbars if that makes sense. So that's what Blade and Soul Combat is all about. Um, not, only is it, not only is it the best combat on the market right now, it has the most depth by far. The skill ceiling in Blade and Soul is absolutely sky high. If you can imagine doing all these moves in the span of seconds going against someone else that's also trying to kill you at the same time, it is insane. Um, and all of the abilities for the most part have pretty short cooldowns. Um, th these swords that you see on my back right here is the longest cooldown I have at one minute. But most of my abilities have really, really short cooldowns. So you always have to be on your toes. You always have to be blocking and, and paying attention to how much focus you have. Those are these little uh, blue dots right here. And watch this. Hold on. Give you an idea. As you can see, as I'm doing moves, they start going away. So you have to balance how much focus you have, where the enemy is, because I can only block from the front. Oh, great. Great. Here's, here's another one right here. When I'm dazed, I have certain abilities as well. It's so hard to talk about combat in Blade of Soul. You guys can see how excited I am to talk about it, but I could spend an hour-long video talking about Blade Master PvP and combat and not even scratch the surface. That's how that's how much depth is in the combat system of Blade and Soul. It's actually scary how in-depth this combat system is. And I can I'm looking forward to seeing some really high-level play here, and I am scared to get my butt whooped um, in that same high-level play. Um, great. Great, I have freaking full inventory. Oh yeah, it's one of those games where you have a ton of inventory space that you're gonna have to buy from the cash shop. But I digress. So, combat is fantastic in Blade and Soul, but what about the other parts of the game, FG? Well, I'm glad you asked. Now, the questing system is really, really standard fare. It's not that interesting at all. Um, it's a bunch of kill kill this, go pick this up, go here, take this to this guy, etc., etc., etc. Um, but what I will give the game props on is that the game continually pushes you along. You're not, at the, you're not in the same quest hub for very long. You'll get four or five quests, you'll fight a few different mobs, and then you'll go to a different place altogether. Um, the locations in Blade and Soul are very unique, so you'll never feel like you're really getting bored. You'll always feel like you're making progress in the game. Um, the quest hubs don't overstay their welcome. So with the combat system and the fact that you're always being pushed... Um, to the next location, it makes the game a lot more tolerable, even though the questing system is something pulled straight out of Terra, for example. If you play Terra, this is how the questing system is in Blade and Soul. Super boring. However, the combat makes it a little bit better. Um, the yellow quests, which are your story mode quests, are actually pretty decent. There's a ton of cutscenes. It's all voice acted. So I definitely recommend at least paying attention to the yellow quests um, because those are actually pretty good. There, there's some, there's some uh, yellow storyline quests that have people dying, some adult themes, some comedy. It's actually pretty well-rounded. So if anything, I would recommend at least listening to the yellow quest. Um, I haven't looked at any of the blue quests whatsoever. 
But that's just me. If you want to read all the quest text, more power to you. Now, another really awesome thing about Blade and Soul is that the game wastes no, no time in introducing you to more complex systems. Now, I'm actually going to kind of... Actually, let's just teleport back to town. Um, most of the main quest hubs have a little green dragon wind strider thingy <laughs> that you can teleport back to at any time, even from dungeons. So I can basically teleport to any place in the game using this little wind strider method. So it's actually pretty cool. All right, so let's touch on some of the more intricate systems of Blade and Soul, starting off with um, the sword, accessories, that kind of thing. So I'm actually gonna start off with this earring right here. Now, the way Blade and Soul works and the kind of the easiest way to explain it is you get one set of weapons and accessories. Now, throughout the game, you'll continually upgrade those weapons and accessories by feeding it lesser weapons and accessories. So for example, this is my earring. I've been using this earring ever since I got it. Um, but throughout the course of the game, I'll find other different types of accessories that I can right click here in this screen right here. And this will continually make my earring stronger and stronger and stronger until it gets to what they call a breakthrough, which I have to then, which is actually a pretty cool system. I do actually like this. Um, it's called a breakthrough item. Now, before I can make my earring any stronger, I need to go find that specific earring called Sam Just Earring. I need to go and find that specific earring and that'll allow my earring to get even more stronger. A breakthrough, if you will. Now, if I need to know where that thing is located, I can go to this screen right here and it tells me Spirestone Canyon's uh, Bok Gong Gang Hideout and I need to be level 34 before I can use it. So that's how that system works. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Who cares about accessories? I don't want to have to use the same exact weapon from level one allow me to help you with that. So here is my sword right here. Now, like I said, uh, same exact system. You take other weapons, feed it to this weapon, and it continually makes your weapon stronger and stronger and stronger. Um, as you can see right now, I'm at a breakthrough point. So I need to go find this sword right here. And I already know where it is, uh, but I'm not level 30 three yet. I'm only level 32, so I can't use it just yet. But once I'm level 33, I'll find that breakthrough weapon, and this will allow my sword to get even stronger. Now, I didn't answer the question, but I'm about to do it right now. You don't have to keep the same look on your weapon forever. So even though I'm using the same exact weapon that I had at level one, it's supposed to look like this. So as you go through and upgrade it, and it breaks through to different levels and different levels, this is the way it looks. I don't like this at all. So all those weapons that you feed into your sword, you can actually take the appearances from those weapons to change the way your weapon looks. So as you can see right here, this is the, the weapon skin that I have chosen to use. Now, as I continually upgrade my sword, upgrade my sword, it'll always look like this. But if I find a different type of sword that I prefer to use, like this still sword right here, I can use the look of this sword instead or I can use a sword of this sealed raw iron sword instead. So I'm not stuck with just one look throughout the entire game, but you do use the same sword for the entire game, if that makes sense. Um, another really cool thing about upgrading your weapon, um, you can also add sockets in, in it as well. Um, as you can see, I have life drain on critical hit. I have HP over time. I have one empty socket right here that I need to find something for. I need to hit the auction house to find that. Um, so that's how weapons and accessories all work here. Um, like I said, one really cool thing that I like the most, I know, <laughs> my favorite part about the game is that it always tells you where you can go and find the next armor and weapon that you need to, to, uh, to break through your weapon. So that's actually a pretty cool feature. Um, as far as armor itself, armor is all, is pure, pure aesthetic. Um, it has no stats whatsoever. So you can basically wear anything you want. So here are a couple of different, um, armors that I've collected for free. None of these are paid at all. Um, these are just some of the things that you can get in the game just by doing basic questing. Look at this helmet. That thing looks terrible. <laughs> um, here are some of the faction gears. So these are actually pretty neat. So if I wear this bamboo uniform, everybody that is in the Black Ram uniform can attack me and vice versa. Um, same thing here with the Crimson Legion. Um, if anyone is wearing, I forgot the name of the blue people. I forgot the name, but if they're wearing the blue armor, we're automatically kill on sight. Um, same thing with these people, the Stratus Empire. If someone's wearing one of these, it might be this. I'm not sure. Yep, they are. Hostile to the Stratus Empire. So if anybody's wearing this armor, you can attack anybody wearing this armor. So it's very, very cool. And if you don't want to do PvP at all, all you got to do is just wear basic gear, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm just wearing armor right here. It has no faction associated with it. Um, also have this little adornment right here, which looks crazy. 
<laughs> Don't ask me. Why can I scroll around? There we go. Don't ask me why I'm wearing that. But I am, because it's cool looking. Um, so that's how armor and weapons work in this game. Um, there it looks like there are some glasses you can wear, a hat, bracelet, belt, and then I'm not sure what this is, but I'm sure I will learn later on in the game. So since all the armor in this game is purely visual, what replaces armor and stats are soul shields. Now, throughout the course of the game, you get all these little different pizza pie slices, um, and each pizza pie slice represents stats. So this one in particular that I'm using is all about HP, accuracy, and defense. So over the course of the game, you'll collect all these different slices here of the soul shield. And then once it's complete, you'll actually have different effects. So it's a set bonus, exactly what you would, you would uh, recognize from a different MMO when you have a set bonus for armor. Same thing with soul shields, it's the exact same system. So if I have three pieces, I get more defense, five pieces, I have more evasion. And then if I have a full complete set, I get accuracy and defense and also get an achievement which the achievements in this game are driving me crazy. It's the only reason why my inventory looks totally, totally insane. Because I have all these different soul shields that I'm collecting, because once you collect an entire set, you get an achievement, and I'm a completionist, and it's driving me crazy. So, so far in this video, we've covered combat, we've covered questing, uh, weapons, accessories, um, the upgrade system, evolution, breakthrough, uh, we've covered the wardrobe system, um, soul shield, so many different systems in this game that aren't present in other MMOs. So, I, I can't explain all the systems to you because this game would be five hours long, but what I will say is that Blade and Soul is a breath of fresh air because all these different systems are so new. It, it, it feels good to finally play an MMO where you don't automatically know everything from the last MMO you played, right? When, when you kind of play an MMO, you're like, oh, this is kind of like WoW, or this is like Rift, or oh, this is like Lord of the Rings Online, I don't know. Uh, most of the systems in Blade and Soul are just different. They're foreign. I mean, literally, they're they're foreign. <laughs> um, so for the last part of the video, I'm just going to kind of run through all the other systems in the game. Because like I said, if I showed you every single thing, this video would be for it, it would just take forever. And like I said before, I'm going to have a PvP video separate because that is an entirely different video as well. The PvP system is like a game in its own. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. So let's kind of go through some of these options right here. You have an armory system that you have in the game as well. That'll show off your cute little character and all your stats. And you can send these to people. Um, there's a website that you can log on to to see all that. Here is your profile screen. Once again, showing you your stats here. Um, this is your faction. I'm gonna, Like I said, I'm going to cover faction and PvP in my PvP video, but there is open world PvP when you're using those faction outfits, um, and it does keep track of this. Um, you can use these points to buy weapons and costumes and things like that. All right, so this is the membership tab. Tr pretty straightforward. The more money you spend on the game, the more benefits you get. The longer you stay subscribed, the more benefits you get. Um, as you can see right here, I have an EXP bonus. I have a quest reward bonus. I can sell items from anywhere the wardrobe system, marketplace discounts, all kinds of different things. It's like a loyalty veteran system from other MMOs. The longer you stay subscribed, the better. So that's that there. Um, next up is the skill tree. I'm not going to go into depth in this right now. This will be in the PvP video. Um, but in my opinion, this is the meat and potatoes of outplaying your opponent. Of course, you have to have some skill, but a lot of the work is going to be done in this screen right here. This is where you kind of change your abilities, make certain ones stronger, etc, etc, etc. I'm going to show you the dungeon finder a little bit later. Um, the marketplace really quick. This is where you this is basically the auction house um, You can access this anywhere and then when you buy the item you do have to go to a mailbox to retrieve it um, So that's basically that and then of course the cash shop so far has been pretty reasonable um, The only thing in here are cosmetic items. There are some consumables that allow you to um, Like for this one for example, this is attack power 5% for 30 minutes. So nothing super overpowered um, and a lot of that stuff is basically all about EXP bonuses to help you level faster. Um, there are keys in this as well, which I'll touch on very briefly at the end of the video. Um, of course, inventory spots, things of that nature. There are materials, but I haven't had the need to buy any of these just yet. But that could change in the late game. I'm not exactly sure. So don't hold me accountable for that. Um, what else is in this here? Uh, bu -bu -bu, extra character slots some bundles and then of course membership time as well so that is the auction house or the marketplace like i said i haven't seen anything in there that looks pay to win at all 
Matter of fact, I can go ahead and tell you there's nothing in there that's paid to win, paid to win, so don't worry about that too much. So last but not least, let's talk about the more controversial system in Blade and Soul, the Dungeon Finder system. Now, let me tell you right now, those worries are unwarranted. Now, in most MMOs, if you queue for a dungeon, you can stay in the world, you can quest, you can craft, you can PvP, you can do whatever you want, and then when the dungeon is ready, you automatically, the queue pops and you teleport to it. Well, in Blade and Soul, you actually go to this lobby. You can't quest, you can't do anything. As you can see, you're stuck in this lobby, and this is where you wait for the dungeon to pop. Now, keep in mind that Blade and Soul has no healers, it has no tanks. So when you are looking for a dungeon, the only thing that you are looking for is five other people or three other people, depending on which way you queue. So dungeons for the most part are absolutely instant queue or very, very close to it. And I'm gonna put my money on the line right here and queue live on video to kind of prove that point. So keep that in mind. A lot of people have kind of downed the game for having this feature. Yeah, it's not perfect, but since the queue are so fast, it actually works better. Um, it keeps the queue flowing because if people are actually in the world doing PvP and questing while they're doing this, they're going to wait on the queue. They're not going to jump into it immediately. Here, as soon as the queue pops, you're going into the dungeon because you got nothing else to do. <laughs> so it does keep it going a little bit faster. Um, another really neat thing about the dungeons is it tells you exactly what's in the dungeon before you even go into it. So you know what armor and weapon and soul shields that you can look forward to once you complete the dungeon and what drops off of certain bosses. So pretty awesome. Um, you can do these dungeons solo, um, but like this one, for example, this is level 20. You can't solo this one at level 20, but at level 32, I probably can. Um, but if I want to do that, I have to actually physically go to the dungeon. I can't use the dungeon finder. So... With all that being said, don't worry about the dungeon finder. I'm about to prove it right now. Looking for party. Here we go. Looking for a dungeon. Instant. <laughs> I am actually, what happened here is I think I joined a party already in progress, but all of the cues are basically instant. Like before I could even get my finger off of the mouse button, I was already in a party. And here I am in a six person party right here. Typically what you'll do is repair your weapon because nobody wants to be in a dungeon with a broken weapon. And then you jump in to the dungeon. You get a little quick loading screen right here with some helpful tips. Uh-huh. Yeah, I already explained that to the viewers. I already did that. Don't you worry about that. Cute, or the loading screens aren't too bad. And here we are in a dungeon, super fast. When you don't have to wait for tanks and healers, there is absolutely no problem when it comes to queuing up for dungeons in the manner that Blade and Soul decided to go with. Um, yeah, that's it. Wow, this video was exhausting. Um, if you take anything from this video, know that I am super excited for Blade and Soul. I've been playing the game basically nonstop. I've loved every minute of it. There's nothing that has... I, there's not a single feature of this game that I haven't liked so far. There have been features that I didn't understand. But for the most part, everything in this game is really well done. Um, I'm looking forward to playing this game for a lot longer. I'm about to knock you up. Oh, you're lucky. You're so lucky. <laughs> um, but I'm looking forward to playing this game for a lot longer. So yeah, that's it. I'm going to go ahead and end the video. You know how I like to always overstay my welcome at the end of videos. But I'm having fun again. <laughs> Lost my voice. No big deal. Alright. Get over here! <laughs> very, very awesome. So that's it. My name is FG3000. This has been a very, very tame look at Blade and Soul. I highly recommend just go out and download this game yourself. You'll see that there is so much to this game that I couldn't even cover. It's just, the game is just too big. Um, yeah. So that's it. My name is FG3000, and I will see you next video. Later.